Hello, everybody. <coughs> this is Yoko Cinema Reactions, and um, I actually bought a few books. I bought a couple of the. I pre ordered actually the. I bought the second volume in the Seventh Time Loop series, and I pre ordered the third and the fourth volumes. However, the fourth volume is only in paperback, so if I was to do that one, whenever I get to that point, you got. I would just have the screen open. You wouldn't be able to see what I'm reading. You would just have to hear it. So, this is going to be a book reading. However, not the seventh time loop and not, well, any of the others. I got a couple, like I said, I got a couple. This one, however, I'm not reading out loud anytime soon. This one, though, I think I would like. It's called Rapunzel of the Magic Item Shop. It's apparently a, what, a comedy and a romance or something like that? Let's see. But this is the uh, main female character. And I'm not sure who the love interest is. I'm assuming it's this one right here, possibly. Or that one, not sure. I doubt it's that one. And uh, I'm not sure. So we will see. Chapter 1, The Sorcerer at the Top of the Tower All alone, a girl smiled to herself as she closed her eyes. She sat in a small room at the very top of a tower. The room was about the size of a child's bedroom, and its stone walls gave the air a certain chill. The only pieces of furniture were a rickety bed and a single weathered chair. No one ever visited, and she was allowed no more than one meal a day. Well, that's gonna... <laughs> that's not cool. If she asked for books, she was permitted a few, but they were always picture books or children's stories. The girl had been locked in that room for over ten years. Oh, time's up soon. An absent-minded whisper spilled from her lips. She opened her eyes to dim light, then frowned a little. I'll stop here for today, then check back in tomorrow. On soles, pitch black with dirt, she padded barefoot to the window. It was tiny and barely let any sunlight through. I wish I could have listened a little longer. I guess they moved too far away. She lightly anchored her hands on the window frame, then stretched up on her tiptoes to try to look outside. There were bars across the outer rim so she couldn't lean out. She thought the additional barrier rather pointless since it was impossible to accidentally fall through such a narrow window. I guess, uh... I don't know. She closed her eyes and listened carefully, but all that reached her ears was the faint whooshing of the wind. I thought so. I can't hear anything. Although, she trailed off, the sky was clear and a gentle breeze carried the scent of flowers to her nose. The sweet smell reminded her that it was now spring. Today's another lovely day. I'm sure tomorrow will be too. The days she received bread with what was normally just soup were good ones. Days she could hear birds singing were great ones. Today, when she sensed the arrival of spring, was an absolutely wonderful day. On top of that, she had been able to overhear a very entertaining conversation. I wonder if tomorrow I'll be able to learn what happened in the end. I do hope so. The girl's favorite pastime was to listen to the people in town talk. Nobody ever came close to the tower, so birdsong was usually all she could hear from nearby. However, when she focused and put her mind to it, she could also pick up faraway voices. I'm guessing this is like a magical talent of hers. She didn't know how it worked. None of the books she read described anyone with a similar ability either, so she suspected that this talent had something to do with why she had been confined to the tower in the first place. I suppose it's magic, she mused. Sorcerers were labeled criminals in this country. Every few decades, a single sorcerer was born. But because society believed that those with magical powers made contracts with demons before their birth, how is that even possible? Every new sorcerer was imprisoned. How is it even possible for someone to make a contract with a demon before they're bored? So, she apparently is a sorcerer. A girl had been brought to the tower at a young age after it became clear she had magic. 
They had explained to her that an arcane barrier surrounding the tower prevented her from using her powers, but she had never known how to wield them in the first place. It seemed strange to be called a sorcerer when she knew nothing about her own magic. If it really is magic, then it might not be such a bad thing after all, she said to herself. The townspeople's conversations varied from day to day, and they were great fun to listen to. She heard children playing, elderly couples reminiscing about their youth, and small talk between shopkeepers and their customers. Once in a while, a fight or two broke out, but they were often resolved by the following afternoon. She listened for a few hours each day. If she tried to listen for longer, a heavy fatigue overwhelmed her and made it impossible to concentrate, which could have been an effect of the barrier. Or you're just overusing your magic. Nevertheless, these few secret hours made her happy. That sense of connection to other people was what had given her the strength to live alone for so long. Happiness. She thought of it as a melting, candy-like sweetness. She had never actually eaten candy, but that was the taste she imagined when she read about it in books. Personally, I reckon magic's a lot like candy. It gave her that same sensation of lingering sugariness. After listening to the townspeople's chatter, a pleasant warmth settled in her chest and stayed with her the whole day, lasting until she went to bed at night. A choof! She sneezed, and a shiver ran through her. Goosebumps were forming on her arms from standing in front of the drafty window for too long. Uh-oh, sounds like you're getting sick. As dusk drew near, the air grew colder, and the thin dress the girl wore did little to keep her warm. What do they do about the when it comes to winter? Do they just not give her anything warm to wear? Because how would she survive this long if they hadn't? Oh, and who's even bringing her food and everything? Because I highly doubt that a blanket would be enough. She decided that it was a good time to curl up under her blanket. But just as she moved toward the bed, she heard a voice from behind her. Hey! It called out in a low tone. She whipped around to face the window again. A brown bird with a long tail was perched on the windowsill. Considering its size, there was no way it could have squeezed the bars. How had it gotten inside? It's magic! It's gotta be someone who could transform or knew how to use magic. While the girl kept her eyes trained on the bird, she heard the voice again. This time it sounded considerably grumpier. I'm talking to you! Yes, you! Can't you hear me? The voice said, Huh? Me? She replied bewildered. Yep, I gotta say, you're pretty slow, aren't you? Hey! Um, Sir Bird, are you the one talking? Her question was laced with doubt, but the bird was the only other living creature present, and the voice was coming from its direction. In answer, the bird opened its hooked beak and flapped its large wings. A gust of wind blew the room, blew around the room and swept the girl's hair behind her shoulders. It's me, all right, the bird declared. She wondered if it was normal for birds to talk. I'm guessing no. But despite her misgivings, she was mostly just happy to speak with someone for the first time in what felt like forever. Did you come here to talk to me, Sir Bird? She asked politely. Not exactly. I'm here to pick you up. Pick me up? But why? Where would you take me? Like I said, who is bringing her food, and does she not ever talk to them? Because she's apparently only given food once a day. So who brings her the food, and do they ever not talk to her? I work for a man called Master Charlie. He requires your abilities, the bird explained. Master Charlie? Throughout all the hours she put into her secret hobby, she had never heard anyone mention that name. By abilities, do you mean... She hesitated, and the bird made a noise that sounded like a chuckle. Magic. Don't tell me you never knew you had it. That must mean I really am a sorcerer, she said with a sense of wonder. Hell no, I would say. <coughs> Shifted something deep within her chest. Having grown up in a country where people said criminal instead of sorcerer, she felt as if this was the first time she had ever clearly seen herself. So, what do you think? Are you coming with me, or would you rather stay locked up in this old tower for the rest of your life? He asked. The girl found his invitation incredibly tempting. If she went with him, she wouldn't be alone anymore. Conversation would stop being something she could merely listen to. But, 
If I go with you, it'd cause trouble for people. She cast her eyes downward as she spoke, shaking her head sadly. How so? Someone once told me that staying locked up in here is the only thing I'm good for, she answered. Nonsense, the bird replied with a hint of dismay. Listen up, young lady. Do you really understand the situation you're in? Alive or dead, these people will never think any differently of you. In fact, if you disappear, I bet they'll just be glad to be rid of you, he spat. She stiffened. If you stay here, you'll be alone forever. Never see anyone, never speak to anyone, until the day you die. Is that what you want? Alone forever. Until I die? She had never truly believed she would one day be allowed to leave the tower, though she might have hoped it. And yet, when she heard that same cold, hard truth from someone else, she was suddenly struck by how much it terrified her. Chills rushed through her from head to toe. I... She took a step closer, her legs shaky and unsteady. If you're that worried about being useful to people, there are all sorts of things you could help out with in the outside world. The bird raised its voice, trying to persuade her. Aren't you curious? If he's telling the truth, and there really is someone out there who wants me. Pure curiosity welled up inside her, overflowing from the depths of her heart. <clears throat> Sir Bird, I... She began, but as she reached out to touch the bird's wings, an invisible force blasted her away, leaving her on her behind. When she raised her head, the bird in front of her was different from the one that had just been sitting there. Uh-oh. I can hear some sort of commotion outside. The guards must have noticed me somehow. Oh, my bad, he said when he noticed the girl on the floor. I guess I knocked you away when I changed back into my original form. The bird used its beak to help her up. There was no doubt in her mind that this bird was the same owner of the low voice. However, he was now so big that he could probably carry the girl's whole bed. Come on, we better, gotta get out of here. You can ride on my back. You are coming with me, aren't you? The bird said as he bobbed down politely, drawing his wings in so it would be easier for her to climb up. Yes, please take me with you, Sir Bird. In reply, his black, round eyes narrowed and he smiled, or at least looked like he did. The bird's feathers were soft and fluffy, which made sitting on his back surprisingly comfortable. She wasn't quite sure what to hold on to and grabbed some long feathers spotting from his forehead. Apparently he didn't like that, because he promptly instructed her to wrap her arms around his neck instead. Just as they were about to leave, she realized there was a glaring flaw in his plan. But how are we going to get out? A, suddenly, a sudden worry hit her. The doors are locked, and they said there's a barrier around the tower. From Master Charlie's perspective, you can't even call the thing a barrier. Now, are you ready? Hold on tight! He warned her before spreading both his wings out. Their huge spans seemed to envelop the room entirely, filling the space with the whirl of feathers. Where her body was flush against his, she could feel his muscles shifting beneath the plumage. Here's how you do it, he grunted as he took off. He kicked the floor to gain momentum, then leaped toward the tiny window. Surely there was no way they'd fit. The girl squeezed her eyes shut and braced herself for impact, but it never came. What greeted her instead was the embrace of wind and dying sunlight on her skin. I'm guessing he shrunk them. He used a magic spell to shrink himself and her. That's probably what he did. The setting sun blazed above her head. There was no floor, no walls, and no ceiling. Somehow her body felt far lighter than it had a moment ago. We're flying, she exclaimed in amazement. The wind was blowing in her face, but she didn't dare close her eyes again. <laughs> That'll give him something to clean up, the bird laughed. Sure enough, when the girl looked behind them, she saw that there was, now, there was now a hole where the window had been. And the walls of the tower were... Oh, she, he just fly, He just forced his way through the dig wall. Of the tower were crumbling down. Far below that, there were soldiers on the ground rushing around its base in a blind panic. Yep, yeah, they do consider her a criminal. The criminal's getting away. What's with that huge bird? Is that a, a rock? Like the one from Legend? It can't be. Never mind that, the tower's collapsing. Both the tower and the soldiers' voices faded away into the distance. The bird flew past the town and the castle before she even had a chance to process what she was seeing, until the endless blue of the ocean overtook her entire field of vision. This is wonderful. I completely forgot what the outside world was like, she marveled. She drew in the biggest breath she could, and salty sea air filled every cranny of her lungs. This is nothing. I mean, if my body were the world, your country would amount to no more than a single feather, he said. The girl had been living in a minuscule room in a tiny country for the first time 
She truly understood just how small her existence had been. Thank you for this, Sir Bird. I always wanted to see the outside world again, she smiled. Don't go thanking me just yet. You see that magic circle? Straight ahead, she saw a glowing, golden, circular pattern folding in the sky. That's what a magic circle looks like. Yep, and we're going to dive into it. It might feel a bit strange, but only for a few seconds. As it's your first time, you better close your eyes, he warned. He began to fly even faster, and she squeezed her eyes shut in as advised. <coughs> Sorry. The moment they plunged into the glowing ring, a most bizarre sensation overcame her. It felt as though gravity was fluctuating, or as if space itself was warping around her. You can open them now, the bird said. When she opened her eyes, she saw a vast expanse of green flourishing beneath them. The, floor, the forest was so magnificent that she had to wonder if it was just as boundless as the ocean they had been flying over a moment ago. We're here. There will be a sudden drop, so hold on tight, the bird announced. They landed in a clearing. She looked around to see a lovely wooden house, a little annex, a snug kitchen garden, and a well. It was a scene from a picture book come to life. Then she saw the slender golden silhouette of a man standing peacefully amidst the trees, as if he were being embraced by their bows. Bows, whatever. The bird lowered himself so she could slide off his back. The ground was pleasantly cool under her bare feet, but completely different from the chill of the stone flooring she was used to. The soft yet sturdy feel of the earth was an entirely new sensation. Is this where that man you mentioned lives? Master Charlie? she asked curiously. That's right. Hey, Master Charlie! the bird called out toward the golden silhouette and the man turned to them. He was tall and young with long golden hair, so I'm guessing Ch Mr. Charlie was the one in the picture, okay. The strands fell to his waist and shone brightly in the sunlight. He wore a long white robe which trailed across the ground and looked at them with kind jade green eyes. He was a strikingly beautiful man. The girl was instantly captivated by those mesmerizing eyes. Girl, you've been stuck in that tower for too long. You, <laughs> you don't even know what love is. So don't be... Then we won't in love too quick. For some reason, however, he also had a very familiar air about him. Hmm, I wonder why. Welcome back, Ark. Is that girl? He gestured toward her. Yep, she can use magic and she wants to help out. Just what you asked for, the bird said, sounding pleased. At some point, he had transformed back into a smaller form and was now perched on the man's shoulder. Ooh, I like him. Master Charlie, as the bird called him, calmly walked toward them before kneeling in front of her. For a moment, she flinched, but it seemed like he simply wanted to make proper eye contact. Sorry for bringing you here so suddenly. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name's Char Charles, although everyone here calls me Master Charlie. The bird who brought you here is Ark, he said kindly. I guess you could say I'm his familiar, Ark chimed in. Okay, that makes sense. I consider him more friend than familiar, but what can you do? Charles shrugged, then got to his feet. There's one more introduction I'd like to make. As if on cue, the door of the house slammed open and a small boy came rushing out. Master Charles, Ark, I never said someone new could stay here, he yelled, running toward them with a look of desperation. Is this your house? If not, then shut up. Okay, so this is uh, the other person that I saw. His blonde hair was curled, curly and fell in neat ringlets. His eyes were huge, like a kitten's, and his irises were the same jade green as Charles. Is that his little brother? The checkered vest and pants he wore suited him well, and if his expression weren't so clouded by anger, he might have even looked cute. In fact, when not angry, he was probably adorable. Perfect timing, Leo. I was just about to introduce you, Charles greeted him. Are you even listening to me, Master Charles? Charlie, I told you, I don't want you to get another apprentice. What's worse, this one's a girl. Oh, his apprentice. Okay. He complained, pointing a finger at her fiercely and scowling. She didn't know for certain, but she reckoned a stray cat defending its territory would act in much the same way. Leah, where are your manners? Charlie admonished. Charles admonished him, frowning slightly. Don't worry, Master Charlie. He'll come around. He just gets shy in front of girls. Ark interjected, swooping off Charles' shoulder to fly around Leo instead. Leo looked irritated. Swishing his hands in the air as if to shoot Ark away. I am not. Anyway, you. How old are you? What's your name? Leo darted toward her and she shrunk away out of sheer reflex. 
In that moment, a hint of his scent wafted by the tip of her wafted by the tip of her nose. It recalled the fresh fragrance of young budding leaves. I think I'm sixteen, and I don't know, she admitted. She guessed that long ago, before she was locked up, she used to have a name, but after so many years of no one addressing her, she had forgotten it. Wow. All alone in that tower, there was no reason to have one. You've got to be kidding. You're four years older than me? Looking at you, I thought you were my age, or even younger. Have you even grown since you were... Leo, stop it. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Otherwise, I'll have to scold you. Charles interrupted him. His tone was even and gentle, but his measured manner of speaking left no room for debate. The air around him seemed to chill, and Leo visibly deflated, looking downcast and dispirited. A moment later, Charles sighed before looking over, back over to the girl with a rueful tilt to his eyebrows. I do apologize for his behavior. I hope you can forgive him, he said. She nodded and Charles gave her a thankful smile. When she saw his smile, it was as if some door deep within her heart suddenly unlocked. Familiar, kind, and warm. She had a faint recollection of feeling the same way before, long, long ago, so far in the distant past that she couldn't remember when or why she had felt it. Maybe a past life? Excuse me, but have I ever met you before? A long time ago? She asked. Me? Charles replied. No, this is our first time meeting. I'm willing to bet it's a past life thing. Or reincarnation or something like that. What am I saying? It's probably the same thing. His expression didn't shift in the slightest as he answered. And yet, the air seemed to change. Charles was lying. I knew it. He did. It has to be a past reincarnation type thing. She didn't know how she knew, but she was absolutely certain. Perhaps she could sense it thanks to her magic, but why would he feel the need to hide something like that? Anyway, you'll run into all sorts of trouble without a name. We can't even call out to you, he noted. Um, how about you give me one, Master Charlie? She proposed, hoping it was alright to use the same title the others did. Oh, is that really okay with you? Whoa, that's a huge responsibility, Master Charlie. You sure you can do this? Arc piped up. You said some pretty rude stuff despite the innocent face of yours. Charles remarked. He put a fist up to his chin and stood there for quite a while, mulling over suggestions. I know. How about we take letters from the end of Charlie and the beginning of Leo to make Lily? It sounds cute, too, he said. No way. I'm not giving her half my name. Oh, shut up. Leo shook his head vehemently, a sour look on his face. In that case... <sighs> How about we combine Charles and Ark to make... No, not Shark. No, 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 no. One, that's not even a name. Two, that's not a good name for a girl. Like a shark, Charles replied. Master Charlie, it's not really my place to say this, but you can't give a girl such a nasty name. Thank you, Ark swiftly cut in, disbelief clear in his voice. You think so too, right, Leo? Uh, I guess. Just a little bit, Leo agreed reluctantly. Aw, Charles frowned disappointedly incredulous that his idea was shut down so quickly. Exactly, Leo. I'm sure you could put up with her name being a little similar to yours, Ark said. Ugh, fine. She can be Lily. At last, Leo admitted defeat. Judging by the look on his face, Charles seemed to have some mixed feelings on the matter, but eventually gave in with a shrug of his shoulders. Well then, from now on, your name will be Lily. Nice to meet you, Lily. Lil. Lil, no. I thought it was Lily. Charles said, holding out his hand. For a moment, she stared blankly at the outstretched hand, not realizing she was supposed to shake it. Then she remembered and swiftly placed her hand in his. It was warm, firm, and large. Lil. I swear, it sounded made me think of Lily. She repeated the name over and over again in her head. Her chest felt wonder wondrously warm and fuzzy. A name. I finally have something that belongs only to me. From that day forth, she was no longer just a girl. She was Lil. I guess that's what? Lily? Lily? What? Whatever. Okay, um. I think I'm gonna go on ahead and end this here. I will. Let's see. Huh. Okay. I'll see you guys next time.